With Sonic the Hedgehog, Street Fighter 2, and Final Fantasy IV being among the most notable releases in 1991, gamers at the time have a lot of great titles to choose from. All of these games are harmless, wholesome, and above all, goreless fun. That's part of the reason why when Midway Games releases Mortal Kombat for arcades in 1992, it generates a lot of buzz. Never before had a game allowed you to rip the head and spine out of your opponent, a feature which is very endearing to arcade goers. Street Fighter, the competing series, allows you to knock out your opponent, which is pretty lame in comparison. A second important title arrives this year, Night Trap from Digital Pictures. It's more of an interactive movie than a video game. The player views everything through security cameras and uses traps to try to protect a slumber party from vampires that are coming to eat them. It's on the Genesis, of course, but it's not on the SNES. In 1993, Mortal Kombat, which I'm going to call MK for now on, comes to both the Genesis and the SNES. Sega sells the game as is, spine removals and all. Nintendo, being the more family-oriented company, gets rid of finishing moves and replaces blood with some weird green goo. Well, that's lame, and Sega outsells them 5 to 1. Nintendo doesn't have a rating system, but they do have a standard and do things like censor MK. Sega kinda allows whatever on the Genesis, but they do have a rating system with three different ratings. GA, MA13, and MA17. Mortal Kombat's graphic violence is causing an uproar, angering parents and politicians alike. Many kids want to play MK, including the son of Bob Anderson, a Capitol Hill aide. He asks his father to buy him the game. Bob views some gameplay and brings the game to the attention of Joseph Lieberman. He's a Democratic senator from Connecticut. Lieberman is shown footage of the game and is absolutely horrified. What? It's just an ordinary crabby- OH MY GOODNESS! On November 17th, Senator Lieberman writes the following letter to his colleagues. He writes, I plan to introduce legislation and hold a hearing on this topic. Uh-oh. Mortal Kombat isn't the first game that has gotten into trouble with politicians for its content. A decade prior, Custer's Revenge was officially condemned by Oklahoma City and was voted to be banned in LA County 3 to 1. Those were just local governments though. Not even Custer's Revenge was brought before the Senate, so the guys at Midway have obviously been some pretty bad boys, at least in the eyes of Uncle Sam. Nobody wants the government coming after them, so Sega asked Nintendo to adopt their rating system because maybe that'll get Lieberman to chill out. Seeing as how Sega's apparent lack of boundaries is the entire reason Nintendo's being dragged in front of Congress, they aren't exactly open to the idea. On December 1st, Lieberman holds a press conference. He's joined by Bob Kishan, who's Captain Kangaroo, Bob Chase, the Vice President of the National Education Association, and Barbara Tallman, President of the Connecticut Chapter of the PTA. Lieberman opens with, Today we're here to talk about the Nightmare Before Christmas. Not the movie, but unfortunately, the violent video games. He goes on to play footage of Mortal Kombat and the infamous bathroom death scene from Night Trap. Kind of violent, yeah, but I'd be surprised if that's the worst you've ever seen. He says that explicit violence and sex are prevalent in video games and that these games will harm children. He also believes that video games contribute to the unacceptable level of violence in our society and he wishes that he could ban this type of content. Unfortunately, he can't do that because of that pesky First Amendment, but he can do something about age ratings, which are not widely used. He announces his legislation co-sponsored by Senator Herbert Cole, another Democrat from Wisconsin. It will give the industry one year to create a rating system. If they fail to meet the deadline, the government will make one for them. Also, there will be a hearing on December 9th. This isn't good. Not only is the government coming after them, but this isn't exactly generating great publicity for the industry. Lieberman and Cole's actions are also very popular with the public, and many are worried that America's youngsters will be influenced by the violence they see in games like MK. After all, we can't have children ripping the spines out of their classmates. That would probably be really bad. It's December 9th, 1993, and it's finally time for the first Senate hearing. Lieberman and Cole are joined by Byron Dorgan, a Democrat from North Dakota. In his opening statement, Lieberman compares violent video games to the Grinch, saying that they threatened to rob this particular holiday season of a spirit of goodwill. He talks about the violence in Mortal Kombat and Night Trap, but also mentions Lethal Enforcers, a game that has a gun as a controller that the player shoots people with. Lieberman has one on hand and holds up the gun, which is aptly named the Justifier. 
Cole says that several companies are already agreeing to a rating system, and he talks about the same stuff that Lieberman did. He thinks that the violence against women in Night Trap is deplorable and should be taken off the market entirely. He also has a problem with the marketing for Lethal Enforcers and shows an ad for the game which he says is targeted towards children. You won't find a toy like this in any Cracker Jack box. He says that these games are desensitizing children to violence and teaching them that violence is the best way to get what you want. Dorgan is up next. He says that those who deny that video games impact children are just like people who deny that cigarettes cause cancer. He adds that Night Trap is sick, disgusting, trash, and child abuse. Maybe, maybe that's a little far. Oh boy, it's time for the first panel. These are the industry's, uh, critics. This hearing was two and a half hours long, and these guys all sort of said the same thing, so I'm just going to summarize everything. These were the main points made by both the panel and the committee. Video games need a rating system. TV programs can promote aggression in children, and video games are worse because the child is actually carrying out the action on screen and not just watching. Sexism and extreme violence are prevalent in video games. Night Trap in particular promotes violence and sexual aggression against women. Children might replicate the behavior they see in these games. Now, I've never played Night Trap before. Probably because I'm not cool enough to own a Genesis. But from all the gameplay that I watched while researching for this video, it's not the horrifying monstrosity that all of these people think it is. Now it's time for the second panel. Nintendo, Sega, Eileen Rosenthal of the General Counsel for the Software Publishers Association, Don Wiener of the Video Software Dealers Association, and Craig Johnson, the past president of the Amusic, um, Amuse, Amusement and Music Operators Association. Nintendo was the first to speak. The company is concerned about violence and pornography, and they decided not to include such content on their consoles. No excessive violence, sexual content, graphic death, excessive force, stereotypes, profanity, or drugs are allowed. He also says that Night Trap will never appear on a Nintendo console, that it promotes violence against women, and that the game has no place in society. He brings up the fact that they censored MK even though they knew they were going to lose money and receive a bunch of complaints. Finally, he asserts that rating games will not make them less violent. Sega opens by bragging about how they've successfully broken Nintendo's monopoly and now have nearly half of the American market. He says that the idea that Sega only sells to kids is wrong and that they sell to a lot of adults. The average Sega CD user is 22 and only 5% are under 13. The average Genesis user is 19 and less than 30% are under 13. Sega also has a rating system and is doing a lot to let parents know about the content of games on their consoles. Rosenthal is next, and she says that the majority of the most sold games have nothing to do with violence, that the SPA wants a rating system, and that plenty of companies are down for it. Wiener from the VSDA speaks. She's concerned about the depictions of violence, but is also scared of government censorship. She also applauds Sega's rating system, saying that it's an excellent starting point. Johnson of the AMOA is next. He says that his organization doesn't deal with home consoles or anything like that, and that the escalating use of violence in the industry is concerning and will be bad for everybody. He encourages designers to please cool it with the intense violence and asks the government to let the industry solve its own problems. Lieberman asks Sega why they sell Night Trap, and Sega responds by saying that they rated it as for adults. That's not good enough, and Lieberman asks why they would even sell it to adults because the content within the game is so deplorable referencing the bathroom death scene. Sega says that the scene is taken out of context and that it only plays when the player loses. Inform. If you're a bad player, what happens? If you're a bad player, you will see that scene. The woman gets attacked. The woman gets attacked. Sega says that this content could have a bad effect on both kids and adults, but until more research is done, they should just use a rating system. Lieberman pulls up a brochure that Sega hands out called Hot 93 Titles. He shows everyone that Night Trap is listed alongside games like Joe Montana's NFL Football and Spider-Man vs. Kingpin. He says that if Night Trap is aimed solely at adults, then they should have two separate brochures for both children and adults. He then plays Sega's classic bully commercial and says that he isn't really a fan of the advertisement. Lieberman says that they're promoting Mortal Kombat to children and promising that they will be free from bullying if they play MK on the Genesis. Sega says that the ad was directed at teenagers and that even though it featured a young boy, it did not air on children's television. Lieberman then pulls up an ad that the California Attorney General sent him. At the top, it says he's back. Splatterhouse 3 for the Sega Genesis is the kind of game rating systems were invented for. Now, and then it goes on at the bottom to advertise that it, it includes deadly new weapons, six levels of monster bashing mayhem, and killer special moves. Um, don't you agree that 
that um, that that kind of advertisement makes a mockery of, of your rating system. Sega says they'll work with the industry to get a better system. Nintendo's next in the hot seat. They begin by saying that Sega's lying and that the demographic of the gaming industry has not shifted from kids to adults. They also allege that Sega was selling Night Trap to children without an age rating and that they only gave it one after they received backlash. Lieberman isn't just mad about Sega's advertisements. He pulls up an ad for the Untouchables. Nintendo says that that was not authorized and that the third party is now in breach of their license agreement. He apologizes to the committee and says that the licensee will be called. Lieberman says that Nintendo is better than their competition. Sega isn't one to take disrespect like that and says that Nintendo frequently lets violence slip through despite their content guidelines. He plays clips of Street Fighter 2 from Nintendo and Sega consoles and they're identical. The only difference is that Sega's version has an age rating. Lieberman is not swayed and says that Nintendo is self-regulating more than them because Sega still publishes horrible games like Night Trap. Senator Cole asks the companies if they can guarantee parents that they will be able to keep disgusting content out of the hands of their children. Sega says absolutely not, and for some reason he adds that Sega has innovated more than Nintendo because they have CDs, and that 60% of those CD purchasers are adults. Nintendo says, I didn't realize that the hearing was focused on market share. I thought we were talking about the regulation of violence, but my colleague must think differently. He also says that there's no way to keep this stuff from kids, unless they have the help of retailers. Sega's been getting grilled this entire time by Lieberman, so Wiener steps up to defend the company. She says that the VSDA met with video game manufacturers to discuss a rating system. Sega helped organize the meeting, while Nintendo didn't even bother to show up. Nintendo says that they don't distribute their games to VSDA members, so yeah, they didn't need to come. Wiener responds by asserting that the VSDA also represents Walmart and Toys R Us. Senator Cole asks Johnson of the AMOA what the arcade industry is doing to prevent kids from seeing this stuff. Johnson says that that's impossible, but the industry is facing economic pressure to not stock the games. Cole tells the panel that he's worried that they're lying and making false promises to get a rating system up. He assures them, if you don't do something about it, we will. If you thought the committee was done with Sega, you're wrong. Dorgan says that a million babies are going to be born out of wedlock this year, which means that they can't rely on parental supervision. He says that, according to his understanding, Night Trap was unrated, and when Sega did rate it, they rated it as MA-13. Sega says that he's wrong and that they rated it as MA-17. Dorgan has a problem with the MA-13 rating as a whole. But doesn't have the word mature attached to that? Yes, I believe it does. And so the presumption is those over 13 years of age are mature? Yes. Are you kidding me? With parental Sega defends itself by saying that the rating is based off of the PG-13 rating in the movie industry. Dorgan moves on and he says that we all have a duty to protect the children of the nation. He immediately focuses his attention on Sega again. He says, I read your statement and I honestly think that you don't understand what we're talking about here. He pulls up the statement, which foolishly claims that there's no evidence that video games cause children to become more violent long term. Dorgan also claims that there's little effort from the industry to keep kids from seeing awful content and that these companies are profiting at the expense of America's children. Lieberman pulls up a document from Sega that says they will not publish games that encourage criminality. He busts out the justifier again and asks whether or not a game that rewards children for killing people with a gun encourages criminality. Sega says they make games and aren't sociologists or psychologists. They rely on experts for rating decisions and they rated the game MA-17. He then brings out Nintendo's bazooka-shaped controller, which <laughs> I guess he just had under his chair or something in case the topic ever came up. He says, once again, that Nintendo doesn't have an age rating. Nintendo says it's called the Super Scope, not the Justifier, and it's for target shooting. That triggers laughs from the audience. He also says that the company rejected Lethal Enforcers initially and demanded a bunch of changes. That's why the game isn't on the SNES yet. Lieberman pulls up ads for games, none of which have age ratings on them. He asks Sega if the company will do everything in its power to have ratings visible on their products and ads for them. Sega says yes, and that he believes that Nintendo does not have the same commitment. Nintendo says he doesn't know what Sega's talking about, and that Nintendo does have a commitment, but is worried that a rating system would meet an open season for manufacturers to just make whatever they want. Lieberman asks Johnson of the AMOA if he can stop a child from walking up and playing Mortal Kombat in an arcade. Johnson says that's unenforceable. He turns his attention to Sega again. Sega said in the past that they would not approve games that denigrate any ethnic, racial, sexual, or religious group. The senator mentions an ad that has a reference to, quote, fighting ninjas in Chinatown. He says it's racist and wants an explanation. Sega just kind of says, I don't know, that's not our ad. 
The committee seems to be done with this. Lieberman says that they're going to pursue legislation and that the gang will meet again later to discuss the progress that the industry has made. He doesn't want to regulate the industry and would much prefer if they regulated themselves. Cole talks about freedom and how people can take it too far and cause damage. He hopes that the industry will take into account our common responsibilities as citizens here and not only as people who are employed to maximize profits. Adjourned. That wasn't exactly great for the industry. Everyone was facepalming while watching the two largest console manufacturers banter on the Senate floor. One man who watched is named Jack Highstand, the senior vice president of Electronic Arts. While everyone is sort of panicking because the government is coming after them, Midway Games and Digital Pictures begin to make insane amounts of money using the exposure that the Senate hearing gave them. On December 10th, the day after the Senate held a hearing on violent video games, id Software releases Doom. Perfect timing. On January 6th, 1994, the Winter Consumer Electronics Show begins in Las Vegas and will last until the 9th. Everyone in the industry is there, so Jack Heistand approaches the CEO of EA, Larry Probst, and says that it would be a great idea to get all of the industry's executives together so they can convene. Probst agrees, and the two of them set up a secret meeting at the convention. The whole gang's there, and everyone agrees that the hearing was really, really bad for everybody. Everyone's arguing with each other over how they should get Big Brother off of their backs. They need to self-regulate the entire industry, but that would require having each company on board with the plan. It's a highly competitive industry, and it isn't a surprise that these guys wouldn't be open to negotiating with their worst enemies. They eventually decide that they need a trade association, but not everyone is on board with these plans. The coalition of companies involved control 60% of the market. They include Nintendo, Sega, EA, Acclaim, Atari, Philips, and the 3DO company, all under the leadership of Highstand. Over the next couple months, the coalition agrees on 13 points. 1. Get a rating- uh, Never mind, I'm not reading all these. On February 3rd, Lieberman, Cole, and Dorgan introduced the Video Game Rating Act of 1994 to the Senate. It would create the Interactive Entertainment Rating Commission, which would be composed of five members appointed by the President. Yeah, the Senate's pretty serious about this. The clock is ticking, they only have 60% of the industry on board, and they have to create a rating system that can review 2,500 titles annually, four times as many as the MPAA. On March 4th, Highstand, Nintendo, and Sega are called back to DC, and they testify in front of Lieberman and Cole again. Dorgan didn't show up this time. Not much happens, they just talk about their progress. It's not really worth including. I wasted two hours of my life watching that hearing. In April, the Interactive Digital Software Association is formed as a trade association. It's called the ESA today. They eventually get the ESRB set up. It has only five ratings. EC for early childhood, K to A for kids to adults, T for teen, M for mature, and AO for adults only. On September 16th, they rate their first games. Doom was rated M, Donkey Kong Country was rated K through A, along with Sonic Triple Trouble. Of course, being the entire reason for the rating system, Mortal Kombat and Night Trap both received M ratings. The ratings have changed a bit over the years, and nowadays the ESRB is widely used and recognized in the United States. Despite the promise that Night Trap would never be on a Nintendo console, you can buy it for your Switch with a rating of... T for teen. So what can we learn from the gaming industry's adventures on Capitol Hill? I guess, if you want your game to sell well and be memorable, get it dragged in front of Congress. Thank you for watching. See ya.